Do you want to print mailing labels from a SharePoint list or any kind of labels? If you do, you can achieve this by exporting your data to Excel and then applying some settings in Excel to get the print output that you're looking for. If you want to see all the steps on how to do this, follow along with this tutorial. Now let's get SharePoint smart. Okay, here I am in SharePoint Online and I've got a basic SharePoint list. I have columns that I've set up which I named line one, line two, and line three for my mailing labels, but you can name your columns whatever you want. If your address information like city, state, and zip aren't in one field, I would recommend that you use a calculated field. Or alternatively, after we dump this to Excel, you can concatenate that information together in one field. But I do recommend trying to get it into these fields if you want. In my example, I'm gonna show a three line label, but you can adapt what I show you to do four lines or five lines or whatever you need. So in my command bar, I'm just gonna click on export and I'm gonna to export to Excel. And from this point on, I'm gonna show you how to work within the Excel output to get what you need. Okay, so here's what I get in Excel uh, immediately after exporting. I am first going to do a couple of things right off the bat. I wanna get rid of these item type and path. I don't need those for what I'm doing. So go ahead and delete those columns. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to save this as an Excel workbook. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do save as, and let's just call this mailing labels. Okay, and I've got that saved on my desktop. So now we're ready for next step. I'm going to add an additional column here. So I'm just going to call this label. And I'm going to use that to store my mailing label. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the column width um, because this is going to take the values of these three fields and put them all together for me. So the next thing I want to do is put in this special formula. I have a couple of formulas that I'm going to use to do what I want and I'll have those available uh, linked underneath the video so you can just copy and paste from that. So my first formula is going to be equals text join and then I need char 10 which is a line break and then I need to reference my columns like so and then I want to copy that formula down through all of my cells so I'm going to go down through all my list data and paste. I need to make sure that my formula is, or my column is set up using uh, formatting for just general. So I'll do format cells and make sure that's set on general. And sometimes it can be a little stubborn. There it goes, it put in the formula for me. Let me go ahead and paste that down again. Okay, and now you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, next thing I need to do is I need to turn on text wrap. Okay, now you're starting to see something that looks like a mailing label. Okay, so text wrap is all set. And let's see what we need to do next. We need another tab, which is where we're gonna do our mailing labels. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of Excel here and I'm gonna add another tab and I'm going to call it labels You can call it whatever you want I'm just going to do that for convenience and then once I've got my tab I am going to need another formula this is the the last tricky formula that you'll have to put in um, so I'm going to go ahead and type that out here you can copy and paste it from what I provide
All right, so I know there's a lot going on there. I'll try to just explain generally what the formula is doing. What we're doing is pulling in the value from column D, and I need to spread that across three rows. So um, let's go ahead and make our columns wider. So highlight all three columns, and we're gonna go to column width. Now we're gonna want something very specific, which is gonna make it so we have exactly three columns in our Excel workbook. Specifically, I'm trying to do the Avery 5160 mailing label template, which is a very commonly used template. It's three columns by 10 rows, but you can adjust what I'm showing you in this tutorial for whatever size of labels that you're gonna do. Uh, in the case of what I'm doing, I specifically want column width at 34.1. And then uh, another thing I can go ahead and do while I'm at it, I'm gonna adjust the row height. So go ahead and select all cells. And now we're gonna do row height. And for this, I specifically want 71. Okay, and this is gonna make it so your print output lines up with the label sheet just perfectly for you. Um, another thing I want, uh, as what I did in my first sheet, is I need to go ahead and get text wrap on. I also wanna center vertically uh, those cells. And then another thing I would like to do is format the cells to put a little bit of an indent on. So click on alignment and we're gonna do an indent of two. Just hit okay. Whoops, something happened. It didn't do it for me. Let me try again. Format cells, alignment, two, left indent. Make sure we got left indent. That's what was missing before. Okay, now you saw it bump over. Okay, now what I wanna do is just copy and paste to the first row for B and C. I'm gonna adjust these very slightly. I'm gonna go into the formula. So that for the second column, I need plus three. And for the third column, I need plus four. This is making it so it'll um, get the right values from this. So in other words, I want this first label um, as the first column, first row. Then I want the second label as the second column, first row. And then I want the third label as the third column, first row. So that's what that formula is all about. Now, the formula is slightly different for all three columns. So what I need to do is copy the formula that's in A down through the A column. So what I'll do is just go through, um, you know, say like the first 100 rows. It just depends on how much you have in your data. And you can see it automatically will work for each of the rows. And then I copy the formula in B1 down. And I'll just make it line up with what I just did. Notice you got some zeros. That's OK. We're going to ignore that part of it. That's where the formula is referencing rows where we don't have any data. OK, now I copy what's in C1. And I'm going to just make that match up with my other data. Okay, I went down to row 100. All set there. OK. We've done all the hard work at this point. We just have some minor adjustments to make. So we've got the column widths correct. That was at 34.1. We've got the row height correct. Those are at 71. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, modify the font uh, a little bit just to show you what's possible there. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select all three columns. And you can kind of go for what you want. Um, I'll select, I don't know what I'll select. Let's see, oh, that's a cloud font. I was wondering why it didn't do anything for me. Okay, I'll do this one. And then, you know, I can adjust the font size a little bit. Now, naturally you need to go down through your cells and make sure you're not overrunning um, the cells at all with your output. Okay, the worksheet is ready for printing other than we need to adjust margin. So, do control P that will invoke the print dialog. And now we need to make some adjustments where it says margin. So click into that box. We're going to be doing custom margins. And first thing, check 
center on page horizontally and vertically. Okay. And then we're going to set all the margins to zero for top, left, right, and bottom. That's it. Okay. So when I hit okay, you'll see update. What you'll find if you print off a single page of this, you can uh, test your output and it should line up with your label sheet. Now this example was for the Avery 5160. I recommend that you print a single page just on a regular piece of paper first, just to be sure um, you know, that it lined up with your labels. It's not gonna overrun the boundary of your label, that type of thing. But you can see as I go through the pages, everything um, does continue to line up and that's it. You can go ahead and print that off to your printer. Um, be sure to go ahead and save your formatting. And what I would recommend if you're gonna do this repeatedly, go ahead and save this workbook and that way you have this as a reference point so you're ready to do this the next time. You'll remember those column widths and the row heights and then you'll have these two special formulas that were needed to get our label content and then populate it into three columns as shown. All right, so that's it. That's printing labels from an Excel SharePoint or from a SharePoint list exported to Excel. One thing that's key about this process, it's saving you an extra step. What people might typically do is a mail merge to Microsoft Word. That will definitely work and that is a viable alternative approach. The steps that I just showed you are eliminating the need for you to have to use Microsoft Word as an additional step to get that mailing label print output. Naturally, there's all kinds of different label sizes uh, that you might use, so you will need to adjust depending on what you're doing. So if that's the case, you're gonna be adjusting the column widths and the row heights to match up on your sheet. And of course, you're gonna be modifying uh, the font to adjust that type of thing. But with some tweaking, you should find that everything works fine. One thing that was key that we did was adjusting those margins. You're gonna definitely make sure to set those at zeros and you're gonna make it so that it centers up both vertically and horizontally by checking those boxes. So make sure you don't forget to uh, check those options. That should be everything that you need in order to take your SharePoint list data and output it to uh, Excel workbook and then print off mailing labels. Good luck.